Hey, what's up guys? Uh, sorry this video took a while to get out. I mean, uh, my editing software decided to do something it's never done before and created a second version of the sequence. But the thumbnail was an image I just put in the video. So I deleted the image from what I needed and it turned out it was the entire fucking video on the timeline. So, sorry if this has been too long. Uh, I have had to remake the video and if it's got less editing and stuff in it than before it's probably because I was just too fucking annoyed to redo it all so yeah thanks. Also let me just say that the the support for my channel is has been fucking amazing recently like at one point there I had 51 subscribers and then it went down to like 34 and now it's back up to 51 that's an absolutely crazy number that I didn't even think was possible and it all happened in like the space of a week so thank you all for uh, you know taking notice of my channel and uh, yeah I hope this video lives up to your expectations Visual novels have never really been my thing. Sure, I've played them, I mean, I had to play through the entirety of school days and that was a fun experience. And I didn't know about Danganronpa before I played it or watched the anime. And to be honest, I wish I'd found about it earlier. It's genuinely that good. The 10 out of 10 ratings that the visual novel got were pretty much deserved in my opinion. The game is oozing with character, has a lot of interesting moments, and keeps you wanting more by the end. Unfortunately, however, the anime adaptation doesn't give you the same feeling and instead leaves you wanting more and you just don't really get that. And I know exactly why it would suck before I even watched the first episode, so let's get into it. seemingly by accident that our main character, Makoto Nagi, is enrolled in an extremely prestigious school. However, we soon find out that he was enrolled as more of a pity party enrollment. However, this doesn't dissuade him from being optimistic, as he says very early on that he's going to attempt to do his best at everything that he's got to do. However, he will be surrounded by elites who are considered important figures in their respective fields. This still kind of causes him to be a little bit pensive towards going to school, but he still keep, keeps his head held high when going in. Unfortunately, however, this turns out to be quite a strange situation, as he finds out within about 20 minutes of being there that he's actually being held hostage along with the 14 other students of the school, and they're going to be forced to play a brutal game in which they either stay captives within the school for the rest of their poor existence, or they can attempt to commit a murder and not be found out by any of the other students, and graduate. Well, yeah, that's a bitch, isn't it? Now, it's funny because a lot of people who told me about this show couldn't tell me more than it's a show about kids killing each other, and to that I say, I have plenty of shows in my collection that are about kids killing each other. I've seen plenty of shows like that. So what's so special about this one? Well, the closest thing I can combine it to is... A weird death game style formula with more of an intellectual mind. After the characters are informed of why they're there and what they're going to have to do to survive and escape, they're pretty much given free range to explore the school to their heart's content. With a few rules, of course. This entire operation being overseen by the entire mascot of the franchise, Monokuma. Now this is interesting because you might say, well that's a pretty cool sounding story, and it is, for a visual novel. You see, the issue right off the bat with the story is the fact that because the visual novel is so heavily text based, they had to figure out ways to make the anime more interesting. But they didn't. 
most of the scenes boil down to monologuing or people just standing around talking, and the exploration scenes can get interesting, but they aren't abundant enough. With too many lackluster scenes of just bland talking and monologuing, it can feel very, very tedious by the end. This was never a deal breaker for me, and there are still extremely entertaining moments such as the classroom trials which never tend to get old, but it definitely is something that you'll have to know when going into this show, because it's pretty much one of everyone's biggest complaints with it. If I was to ever actually congratulate any member of the production team of this show, I would definitely have to congratulate the writers for being able to fit every single major plot point from the visual novel into the anime. With only 13 episodes, it would, must have been extremely difficult to do that, and they managed to do it without any really noticeable cutoffs. I'm not going to really spoil any of the major plot points of the show because you don't really need to know them to get the gist of what happens in the show. Just know that if you have played the visual novel, it's probably not worth watching the anime adaptation unless you really must have to. Or you just can't get enough of this series, and specifically like the first one. One of the franchise's most appealing factors is the creative character design and interesting characters. And while the anime doesn't completely disappoint in this field, it also doesn't completely deliver on what it needed to. For example, the absolute abundance of dialogue sequences in the visual novel allow for extremely enjoyable development with a majority of the characters. And even though some get more than others, at least the others also do get some. In the anime, however, it's only vital characters who have something to do with the main plot that ever get development. Characters like Nagi, Kirigiri, and, uh, fucking Toko or whatever her name is. You know, that weird murderer lady. Outside of that, about six or seven of the other characters have completely no bounds on the story, so they barely get any real development. This is extremely sad because if you're a fan of the series and you have a special favourite character, you only have about a 30% chance that they're ever actually going to be anything more than just, you know, plot pushes. I'm going to spoil the first execution for the series just because I need to tell you how I feel about these characters being treated like this. So, if you don't want that to be spoiled, you better leave now, or skip to a timestamp that I'll probably post in the description. The first execution is of the baseball player, Leon. Now it's funny because he's only executed because he was defending himself against another character who was attempting to commit murder against him. However, he gets executed and he probably doesn't even say about 20 words before he gets killed, which is real sad because in the visual novel, he gets quite a lot of dialogue, which actually furthers his character as being a pretty chilled out guy. This is only indicative of what happens to most other characters, which is really sad, because most if not all characters in Danganronpa, even if you don't think they're your favourite, are likeable in some way. This part of the video is where I talk about other aspects of the show that I haven't explained in another category. The animation in this show is pretty nice and fluent and looks professional, and the designs and characters all have that same atmosphere that the rest of the Danganronpa franchise possesses. The music is very well done, especially the opening theme song, and while the voice acting for the English dub is pretty shit in some places, with Makoto Nagi sounding like a 30 year old, the Japanese voice acting dub is probably my preferred way of watching the show, because all the characters do a pretty adequate job of portraying the characters that they were given. Now, let's go on to final notes, and pretty much a verdict. Danganronpa's most egregious fault is the fact that it's too short. With the visual novel, they had upwards of 27 hours to develop characters, push the story along at an interesting pace, but also to just add more to the series. Unfortunately, with only 13 episodes, the anime was almost bound to fail. It's a tall order to expect an anime to even adapt a 13-hour visual novel, let alone 27. But it's really a shame that they couldn't do better than they actually did, because a lot of the characters feel dry, it has a terrible pace at points, and there are a lot of points in the series where it's extremely tedious to watch due to its absolutely awful amount of standing around and talking. 
Unfortunately, I can't rate this show much higher than a 5 or a 6 out of 10, because while I did enjoy a shit ton of it, it's just not great. Compared to the visual novel, I'd have to say don't go for this, or only watch it if you must. And you don't really have to. I watched this anime for free in its entirety on Anime Lab, and you can usually find a version of it on DVD for about 40 bucks Australian. So if you really want to add this to your collection, then that's easy, I guess. To be honest, this was an enjoyable watch to be... But it's just not exactly recommendable to anyone who has any experience with the series beyond just the anime.